So the kickoff rule has officially been changed, and now we have some new things to talk about. Fair catches are no longer a thing. So, yeah, it, it's kind of weird. So here's the general rundown. Here's a look at the official kickoff change rule proposal. Teams uh, could have a maximum of two returners. Kicking teams can't move until the ball hits the landing zone or is fielded there. No more fair catches. So the landing zone, I believe, if I am correct here, yeah, right here. So all the kickoff team personnel has to line up here. They cannot move until... The ball is at least in the 20 uh, toward the end zone or somebody fields the ball. So like a squib kick or something like that. That's the only time that this area right here can move. This area right here, their job is to, again, relax, chill, wait for this, the ball to get here, and then run forward and stop blocking. As it says here, if the kick doesn't reach the landing zone ball at the 40 if it goes out of the end zone or flies into the end zone and is down the ball is at the 35 if it hits in the landing zone and rolls into the end zone it's down at the 20 but if it's caught in the land zone it must be returned so if you catch the ball in this landing zone right here you have to return it you can't fair catch it you can't do anything else you have to take the ball out and try to get as many yards as possible. Again, this team right here, the offense, the kicking team, cannot move until this ball is in this landing spot. So once it goes overhead, bam, right here, bam, run. This team runs forward, this team sets up the block, and this gives the kick returner around the 10 to 15 yard, you know, area where they can catch the ball and then start running before they get hit. So no one's going to run into anybody in this scenario. Uh, potential, potential no more kickoff holders. If conditions cause the ball to fall off the tee twice, then a kicker will be allowed to use the kicking stick to keep the ball in place. The closest covering official will pick up the stick immediately after the kick. So... No more holders, that's no longer a thing. The ball lands in the landing zone, then goes out of bounds. The current rules apply, ball's at 40. So the real big difference here is, really going back to this, is that if you if the ball is in the end zone, right, and they down it, or sorry, they catch it, and you know it's down in the end zone, you get the ball at the 35-yard line. So it's no longer that you get the ball at the 25. So if you catch up, you know, you kick off the ball and it goes in the end down, you get a 35-yard line. This incentivizes kickers to not kick it out of the end zone. What this does is it really, in, you know, blatant terms here, causes more kickoffs to happen. Because if you kick it out of the end zone and you kick it short, it's just going to be at the 30, it's just going to be the 35-yard line. But as it says here, if you just let it roll in the end zone and it is downed, then you get it to the 20-yard line. So if it hits the lane zone and rolls in the end zone and rolls through the back of the end zone, you get it to the 20-yard line. But if you if it kicked out of the end zone or it's kicked in the end zone and they down it, automatically 35-yard uh, line. So it really incentivizes kickers to you want to kick it in the landing zone. You want them to return the ball. If not, you're going to have to deal with the fact, again, they're getting the ball at the 35-yard line, which is kind of crazy. So, they show some things here. Vote was 29-3. Green Bay, Las Vegas, San Francisco voted against it. Um, and, again, this just gives a lot more kickers opportunities or jobs, too. Because now you want to get a kicker who can kick the ball, not out of the back of the end zone. You want a kicker that can kick the ball and land it in the landing zone. How onside kicks will work with a new NFL rule. If a team is trailing in the fourth quarter, they may declare an onside kick by notifying the referee. The referee will notify the receiving team. So no more surprise onside kicks. From now on, you are going to get notified, both teams, that the onside kick is coming. So you can't, like, you know, run up and then do, like, as you're going to kick it deep, but then pooch it to the left-hand side. You can't do that. Both teams need to know an onside kick is going to happen. Which... I guess the actual onside kick will look the same. And again, it won't look anything different. It's going to be the exact same, except now it's announced that the onside kick is happening. 
Which, I'll be honest, most onside kicks, you know, you kind of know they're going to happen anyway based on the score and based on how the situation in the game is going. So it's not like it's a new thing that, oh, the onside kick is going to happen. It's like, okay, well, we kind of knew that was going to happen based on the situation that is, you know, being put out there. Um, but yeah, so kind of interesting. Kind of interesting changes. I think the onside kick isn't really that big of a deal because, again, like I said, the idea of everything is just, it is what it is. Let's watch this video real fast to kind of get a general idea of what he's explaining. You have your kickoff team and your turn team lined up about five yards away from each other. The kicking team will be lined up on the receiving team's 40-yard line. The receiving team will be lined up on the receiving team's 35-yard line. The only people who won't be on the 35 or the 40 are the kicker and the returner. The returner will be back uh, near the goal line wherever returners go. Kicker will be back at his own 30-yard line where he will be kicking the ball. Those are the only two people who can move before the kick. Once the kick happens, uh, the kicking team's tacklers, uh, the coverage team, cannot go for the returner until he catches the ball or until the ball bounces inside the 20-yard line. Then you're also introducing three kind of touchback options. If the ball does not make it to the receiving team's 20-yard line, it is considered out of bounds. Uh, the receiving team gets it at the 40-yard line. If the ball is kicked into the end zone on the fly or out of the end zone, you get a touchback, but you get it at the 35-yard line. And then finally, if the ball lands inside the receiving team's 20-yard line, rolls into the end zone, you get a touchback. Okay, that kind of makes sense. At first, I thought like they were saying that once the ball, you know, is overhead in the landing zone, that automatically means that, you know, you can start running. But no, the guy has to catch the ball. So nobody can move until the guy catches the football other than it looks like the kicker and obviously the two return man. So everyone has to kind of stay there, be a statue until that situation happens. Which again, like I said, does make perfect sense and... Uh, listen, it is definitely a difference, okay? Um, this is going to allow more kickoffs. I will definitely say that. I think they did a really piss poor job of doing the fair catching situation in general. So I think this is a good way to kind of combat that. I don't know how much, how well this is going to work. Again, we'll have to wait and see. But, I mean, it's something, man. You know, they're changing it up. They changed up the you no know, hip drop tackle anymore. And now... They're adding this situation in here too. So it's going to get interesting to see. Um, shout out to CBS, CBS Sports for posting this and kind of breaking this down because it's, it's, a, it's a different story, man. Guys, tell me down below your thoughts and opinions. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.